Hi, I'm Dong Xiong. Welcome to Digging to China, where we explore China in depth to reveal unique perspectives. In 2024, a Chinese automaker sold a staggering 4,270,000 vehicles in a single year, surpassing all but Toyota to become the world's second largest car manufacturer. The news ignited national pride, with many Chinese netizens hailing the company as a source of national honor and giving BYD their enthusiastic support. At the BYD's 30th anniversary celebration at the end of 2024, CEO Wang Chuanfu proudly revealed the company's secret to success. You must first learn from giants to become one. 30 years ago, BYD was nothing more than a small battery factory with just 20 employees. So which giant did it learn from and how did it transform into an industry behemoth? Today, let's dive into this inspiring yet deeply ironic story. BYD's approach to learning wasn't just about paying lip services. Wang Chuanfu had long set his sights on the lucrative automotive industry. But in China, manufacturing cars require official certification. So in 2003, he gritted his teeth and acquired Chinchuan Automobile, a failing company on the verge of bankruptcy. While this move seemed like picking up a discarded bottle, it was actually BYD's first step toward emulating industry giants. Chinchuan's flagship model wasn't exactly high-end. Its most well-known offering was the Flyer a slightly larger and modified version of the Suzuki Auto. But the real kicker? The badge BYD slapped onto the car. They took BMW's round logo stretched into an oval, moved the letters from the top to the bottom, and shrank the iconic blue and white quadrants into two. Even funnier, BMW originally stood for Bavarian Motor Works. Wang Chuanfu think he needed a three-letter abbreviation with an air of sophistication came up with Build Your Dream BYD. Fancy, right? And just like that, the first car bearing the BYD logo rolled off the line. But Wang wasn't done. In 2007, he felt the oval BYD logo wasn't striking or upscale enough. This time, he turned to another small giant in the auto industry, Kia. Drawing inspiration from Kia's emblem, he altered the font and swapped out the Kia letters for BYD. This logo remained in use until 2021, until Kia itself decided to update its branding in January of that year. True to form, Wang Chuanfu followed the suit, updating BYD's logo and along the way, even taking a jab at a Tesla. On national television, Wang Chuanfu once boasted, we developed the BYD F3 from scratch in just 14 months. Even experienced automakers take at least 18 months just to design the mold. So how did the BYD F3, a supposed feat of engineering, get designed so quickly? Simple. The F3 was a near-identical replica of the ninth-generation Toyota Corolla. Not just similar, a perfect one-to-one -one copy. The body, parts, and the mechanical components were so identical that they were 100% interchangeable with Toyotas. Why Toyota? The reason was obvious. The Corona, not known as the best-selling car in the world, was a true global giant. In China, its massive market presence meant that the spare parts were abundant and dirt cheap. Wang Chuanfu's idea of research and development was essentially copying Toyota's blueprints wholesale bypassing costly R&D and supplier negotiations altogether. The results were staggering. In its first year, the BYD F3 sold over 100,000 units. In Shandong province alone, 9,000 units were sold in a single month. The reason? Simple. For half the price of a Toyota. Customers could own a car that was essentially a Toyota. Many new F3 owners wasted no time removing the BYD badge and replacing it with a Toyota logo. A trend so popular that online forums were filled with step-by-step -step guides on how to convert an F3 into a Corolla. The real Toyota owners, however, suffered the consequences. They constantly had to clarify, no, this isn't a BYD, leading to collective frustration. 
Toyota had spent around $1.3 billion, about 100 billion yuan, developing the ninth generation Corolla, while BYD's chief designer Lian Yubo proudly declared the F3's design is flawless and can rival any car in its class. He also claimed that F3's development cost over 100 million yuan, meaning BYD had effectively copied 100 billion yuan project for just 1% of the cost. No wonder Lian Yubo was hailed as the chief designer. Emboldened by the F3 success, BYD fully embraced its learning strategy. M6 modeled after the Toyota Previa. F0, a clone of the Toyota Argo. S8, inspired by the Mercedes-Benz CLK. G3, a near-carbon copy of the Toyota Camry. F6, a shameless replica of the Honda Accord. Even the wheel design was identical. S6, almost indistinguishable from the Lexus RX. Much to the horror of actual RX owners who saw their luxury SUVs prestige plummet overnight. Surely, BYD feared the legal actions for such blatant copying? Not at all. Chief designer Lian Yubo boldly stated, We dismantle many cars each year. If a component is patented, we avoid it. If it isn't, we use it, and we are fully prepared for lawsuits. We ensure a 100% chance that we won't lose. It became clear that BYD's real technological prowess wasn't in R&D, but rather in navigating government business ties and exploiting legal loopholes. While Wang Chuanfu tearfully rem uh, reminisced about BYD's hardship-filled journey, much of it likely involved closing up to officials and knowing how to play the system. Anyone who's copied a classmate's homework knows that even copying doesn't guarantee success. This is exactly the predicament the Chinese automakers face when it comes to car engines. Copying the exterior and the mechanical designs was one thing, but developing a reliable engine capable of running 200,000 kilometers without major repairs? That was a different ballgame. Toyota, for instance, never sold its top-tier engines to outsiders. So what did BYD do? They turned to Mitsubishi, which was more than happy to supply them with 4G18 and 4G15 engines. But relying on another company's engines meant dependency, supply risks, and most critically, low profit margins. Determined to break free, BYD resolved to develop its own engine. Their target? Volkswagen's EA111 1.4T turbo engine, a powerhouse of German engineering featuring direct injection, water-cooled turbocharging, and an integrated intercooler. What happened next? Well, we all know how BYD learns from giants. BYD's pursuit of becoming a global automotive powerhouse began with a daring move. They set their sights on the giant Volkswagen and launched a reverse engineering project. The strategy was bold, taking apart a complete engine down to its last bolt and then copying it piece by piece. But this time, BYD exhibited a modicum of restraint. To avoid drawing suspicion, they made a sub subtle modification. They slightly increased the cylinder di diameter of Volkswagen's 1.4T engine, transforming it into a 1.5T, and in doing so, claimed it as a brand new patent. This clever maneuver allowed BYD to bypass Volkswagen's patent restrictions, presenting the project as an independently developed innovation. This so-called reverse engineering, which effectively legitimized the plagiarism, reshaped many people's perceptions of BYD at the time. After a decade of slow but steady progress, BYD reached a pivotal moment and officially transitioned into a new energy vehicle company. Their advertisements plastered over everywhere proudly proclaimed the benefit of the self-developed DMI hybrid technology. It was this technology that helped BYD position itself as a national car brand in China. 
However, critics quickly pointed out that BYD's hybrid system bore a striking resemblance to Honda's IMMD hybrid system. In response, BYD claimed to have applied for patents as early as 2007, a full year before Honda's application in 2008, leaving the question of who copied whom still open for debate. But what's the real story here? In the automotive industry, a widely circulated saying goes, when it comes to hybrid, there are only two categories, Toyota and everyone else. This just isn't about a superiori superiority, but about the design fundamentals. Toyota stands alone with a completely unique hybrid system, while other brands follow a different approach, similar to the contrast between Apple's ecosystem and Android's. Non-Toyota hybrids operate in much the same way, and the BYD's DMI is no exception. Its principle is akin to a locomotive engine. For most of the time, the engine's primary role is to generate electricity, while the electric motor does the work of driving the wheels. Naturally, the actual system is far more intricate than this. One thing remains clear, BYD got an early start. They applied for a hybrid patent in 2007 and introduced the BYD F3 DM, a hybrid version of the F3. By late 2008, BYD's argument goes something like this. Not only did we file for the patent first, but we also built a car before Honda even applied for their patent in 2008. So who's copying whom? While technically not unreasonable, the real story involves much more than a simple race to patent. Delving deeper into the world of patents reveals some interesting insights. A closer look at BYD's hybrid system patent shows that it explicitly draws upon an earlier patent, USP 6209672. But who owns this original patent? A bit of digging reveals that it was registered in the late 20th century by a Russian-American immigrant named Alex J. Severinsky. Severinsky's patent, one of the earliest for a serious parallel hybrid system, included crucial features such as a direct connection between the drive motor and the differential, as well as a direct link between the engine and the generator, with an optional clutch to drive the wheels. When comparing this description with BYD's DMI, Honda's IMMD, and a hybrid system from other Chinese automakers like Cherry and a Great Wall, a striking resemblance emerges, with a slight modifications like adding an overrunning clutch or a speed increasing gear. It becomes clear how one could sidestep the original patent and file a new one. Patents for inven inventions last 20 years, meaning Alex Severinsky's patent expired in 2019, entering the public domain for anyone to use. This paved the way for a sudden surge of hybrid technology from Chinese automakers, all seemingly discovering a breakthrough at the same time. It was at this moment that the BYD's DMI hybrid system truly took off, and they began touting their overtaking on the curve strategy. But in reality, the reason behind this boom was far more mundane. The patent had expired, and the companies felt free to dive headfirst into hybrid technology without the fear of legal disputes. This resulted in what could only be described as a nationwide copy and paste movement. By now, you may be wondering who exactly is this Alex Severinsky? a Russian-American immigrant who moved to the U.S. during the Soviet era. Lauk founded a company that played a significant role in the development of hybrid technology. His core team included industry veterans such as Bob Temperin, former research lab director at General Motors, and Ted Lauk, a veteran at GM. Together, they developed numerous hybrid-related patents, which had a lasting impact on the automotive world. Now that these patents have expired, a new wave of players has flooded the field, ushering in what we see today as China's so-called technological self-reliance in hybrid vehicles. This is the reality behind the overtaking on the curve. 
At this point, the true nature of BYD's rise to prominence becomes evident. While their history of uh, bootlegging may not be glamorous, the company has still managed to act self-righteously. Time and again, BYD sits in front of cameras and proudly boasts about its independent innovation, as if their history of copying and cloning never existed. This curious phenomenon reveals its disturbing truth. In today's world, as long as you succeed, no one cares about how you got there, especially when it comes to intellectual property theft. We've seen this pattern before. Look at the Chinese author Guo Jingming who was sued for plagiarism and lost the case but still refused to apologize. Despite this, he faced no real consequences, continued to amass a large fan base, and later became a successful film director, helming a movie that grossed 500 million yuan. In the end, he secured his status as a winner in life, while the original author Zhuang Yu remained largely forgotten. This is a clear reminder that in today's world, success often draws out the ethical questions behind it. With such precedents, BYD appears to have unlocked a cheat code. The company has risen to become the world's second largest automaker in just a few years. But how did they achieve this seemingly impossible feat? What other clever tactics did they employ along the way? The full story behind BYD's rapid ascent is one worth exploring, perhaps another time. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like it, drop a comment below, and hit the subscribe button right here. It really helps YouTube suggest my videos to others. I'll be back with more content soon. Until then, be well.